My name is Shane Kaufman. I'm a senior applications engineer with the AWR Group at National Instruments. And I'm here today to talk to you about multi-technology module design, verification, and yield optimization in the AWR design environment. So I'd like to first begin by talking about a couple of problems that module designers face on a daily basis. Um, the first problem is that there are many uncorrelated factors in module design. For example, you might have a registration error or etch tolerance of the metals on the model. Um, secondly, there, um, corners analysis when trying to do a yield analysis with a large number of variables becomes impractical very quickly uh, for module design uh, because the number of yield trials grows exponentially with the number of variables. For example, if you have a five layer module with 10 surface mount components, you might have um, five variables um, for the registration error, five variables for the under and over etch, and five variables for the dielectric variation, as well as 10 variables for the variation of the surface mount parts. Um, and this lends itself, there are 33 and a half million yield trials, and uh, no one's going to want to wait for the simulation results of that. The second problem is that on module designs, most of the time there are multiple technologies. Um, you might have three, five chips, silicon chips, as well as the PCB technology of the module itself. And designers should always use the tool that is most efficient for designing, but at some point, they're gonna have to bring all of this together to run a full system simulation and verification. Um, if tools have um, interoperability, this allows the designer to um, simulate and verify the full system design. Um, a, a common or likely example of this is where the silicon chip would be designed in Cadence and the PCB would be designed in Microwave Office. So at AWR, we've come up with a design flow that addresses the concerns previously mentioned. The first is rather than using a corners analysis, um, it would be smart to use a Monte Carlo, Carlo analysis. Monte Carlo analysis can give meaningful yield results with many less yield trials. Um, secondly, um, shape modifiers lend themselves very well to the manufacturing variations of modules such as uh, registration error or etch tolerance. Um, the third is even though we're going to shift to a Monte Carlo analysis, there's still going to be a large number of yield simulations that need to take place. So we'd like to distribute and parallelize these amongst a remote simulation server to reduce the amount of time it takes for the engineer to get their yield results back. Lastly, um, with regards to interoperability, um, we'd like to be able to export these, um, the, the yield results to um, Cadence so that the silicon designer or the, um, the PA designer can actually optimize the PCB or, or for his um, particular um, power amplifier. Um, so a little bit more on Monte Carlo analysis. Monte Carlo analysis, um, each parameter that's ran during the yield analysis will, for each iteration, will be the value that's representative of its actual statistical variation. It's also easy to compute the number of yield trials that it takes for a particular yield percentage with an acceptable error percentage for a particular conf confidence level. For example, if your yield is 90% and a 1% error and your results is acceptable, and you want a confidence level of 95.4%, that would be 3,600 yield trials. Um, AWR um, has some great tools that, uh, for, for laminate design. Um, for example, when you're looking at the registration error or over and under etch, um, we have layer-based modifiers which shift entire layers, and it makes looking at these particular manufacturing variations um, very easy to set up in our environment. In addition to this, um, the dielectric variations and the surface mount, mart, uh, surface mount part tolerances are extremely easy to set up as well. They're just parameters, so you can do a per, um, parametric sweep or you can set up um, a particular yield distribution for these parameters. And lastly, we have a viewer um, with connectivity for visual verification, and we're going to talk a little bit more about these here in just a moment. So layer-based shape modifiers to elaborate, um, if you look at the image on the left on the screen here, if you look at the spiral inductor on the bottom, you can see that the metals are all the same width. They're all aligned um, with each other in the z-axis as well, 
there's, there's no registration error here. If you look at the image on the right, you can see that the layers have shifted in X and Y independently of one another, and they've also, um, the pink one has gotten thicker and the gold one has gotten thinner. This co so these two things correspond to your registration error as well as your over and under etch. Um, these modifiers are, to do this, to actually do, so for each layer, you might have one layer modifier and uh, then the amount that it moves each layer is just a parameter and that parameter can have a statistical variation. Um, a little bit more on the statistical parameters that I've been talking about. Um, for example, um, setting up the statistical variation for the dielectric constant in this particular module is trivial. Um, all we have to do is say that we want this in variable to be enabled for statistics. We specify its distribution type and then we give it the standard deviation, uh, whether that is in standard deviation or percent. Then this variable is actually used in the stack up and when we run a yield analysis, the value of the dielectric constant is going to be uh, what it would be for its statistical variation. Um, and lastly, when you're uh, jiggling layers like we are with the, the layer-based modifiers, it could be easy to enter um, incorrect numbers and you could wind up with shorts or opens. And so having a connectivity highlighter um, that really, really easily shows if your uh, the, the metallization, if the connectivity is changing, uh, this, this can be a really good tool to, to make sure you're not causing opens or shorts in your circuits when using the, the layer modifiers. Lastly, um, with our distributed EM capabilities, you're able to send all of the EM simulations to a remote simulation server and distribute those simulations across any number of computers. Um, there's a, the amount of time that it takes to get your results back is just divided by one, or it's, you know, it's basically the full simulation time for all of the old iterations divided by the number of computers that you have. Um, so you can get yield results back fairly quickly. The results that do come back to the engineer um, come back in the form of data sets so that they can be used um, later. And lastly, the um, output of the yield analysis is a parameterized spectra net list where um, we're looking at S parameters that, that correspond to the yield analysis trials. Um, so we're going to switch gears a little bit here and we're going to start talking about the load pool model. So load pool data files contain performance metrics in the form of A and B waves for many gammas. From those A and B waves, you can actually um, extrapolate other performance metrics such as PAE or gain or output power uh, from the device. Um, and from the load pool file itself, you can um, interpolate those performance metrics such as PAE or output power for an arbitrary load. Um, there's a couple of benefits of this. One is that you're able to simulate the performance of the transistor without actually having the transistor in the environment. So there's no need to translate the model or to have uh, cross-tool PDK support. The second is that um, the simulation speed is more like a linear simulation rather than a nonlinear simulation, when you, even though you're looking at nonlinear results like output power or PAE. Um, so when you're doing a yield analysis, you'd like to leverage this uh, simulated load pool data because you can apply an arbitrary load and you can get the interpolated uh, performance metrics that you're after. If you look at the graph on the bottom, we're actually looking at the interpolated PAE and output power for a yield analysis where the impedances presented to the device um, were arbitrary and um, we interpolated the output power and PAE here. Um, of course, once you're done doing a yield analysis, um, a designer is going to want to identify the parameter sets that cause the yield failures or uh, correspond to the outlier traces that we see on our, on our graph here. And then obviously they're going to either you know, pay more money and try to change the tolerances, say, of their surface mount components, or they're going to center the design so that the yield is, um, is higher. Um, in addition to those types of analysis, though, we actually have the capability to do a full sensitivity analysis or a Pareto analysis. And the benefit that this gives you is that all the variables that are set up for yield are weighted against one another. Um, and you can look at which particular parameters in your yield analysis are causing the most 
change or degradation of particular performance metrics that you're looking at. So for example here, we're looking at the uh, sensitivity of output power and the sensitivity of PAE over all the variables in our particular yield analysis, and those variables are, are going to be different. Um, we've been talking this entire time about this design methodology in the context of yield. Um, it turns out that the same flow, the same idea corresponds to design as well. So the PCB designer, the module designer, he might actually um, do a parametric design and then export this as a parameterized spectral netlist to the to cadence to be used in cadence so that the IC designer can optimize the PCB to his IC or at least know what design constraints he has on his IP, his IC to get the best performance out of the, the total module. Um, so in conclusion, um, for module analysis, due to the large number of independent variables, we recommend using a Monte Carlo analysis approach for yield rather than a corners analysis. Um, our shape modifiers, our layer modifiers, are a great tool for looking at the actual manufacturing variances that occur in modules such as registration error or etch tolerance. Um, we recommend when you're doing these yield analysis to distribute them and parallelize the simulations so that you get the results of the yield back faster and then finally um, to be able to combine and look at the full system simulation we can create cadence compatible models parameterized spectra net lists um, so that the designers can look at the full system performance and do a full system verification. Um, thank you for your time, and if you have any more questions about module design or yield, um, please see ni.com slash awr.